What's up YouTube, G-Dubs here. Today, we have the first piece of uh, the garage gym showing up. Daughter and her boyfriend went to get some weights. Check it out. We got some 20s, we got a weight rack, we got some bells, we got Kyle back there. Got the POW MIA flag, boom, boom. A Little bit of uh, flag action going on. This is gonna be an epic gym. Gonna put it right over here. We're gonna have a squat rack right there. We're gonna have some weights. We're gonna have a skier. We're gonna have wrestling mats down below. Join us as we build our gym down at the GW area. We don't even know what we're gonna call it yet, but it's gonna be an epic gym. So, with that said, signing off for the first episode of Build Your Garage Gym. See you soon. As promised, uh, we're gonna bring you a home gym. Um, Listen, coronavirus, right? Sick and tired of dealing with open and closings of different things. Wearing masks at the gym is garbage. Um, I don't have time. I'm getting ready to leave for military duty for quite a bit. In and out of the house constantly. Families working all the time, working from home, doing a bunch of different stuff. But uh, we figured we'd uh, build a gym. So what we're going to be building is a squat rack and a uh, squat platform. So... The squat platform we're going to be actually building next here. Uh, we're going to bring that to you first, and then we're going to bring our foldable, uh, our own design of a foldable squat rack to make sure that you can do it in the home gym. It's going to be in the garage over there, as we showed you before, and uh, it's going to be able to be folded up against the wall, and it's actually going to be pretty cool to be able to do some other stuff in there. We're going to have a squat rack, uh, like I said, and then we're going to do um, a little area for... Uh, gymnastics slash wrestling because my son's a wrestler and then my daughter today she's gonna be helping me out to build it and hopefully my son mr. computer genius himself will come out uh, and do it so anyways let me let me walk you through here all the tools that you're gonna need for today and what we're gonna go through and everything else so these are your basic hand tools you can do do it yourself for stuff uh, nothing too awfully complicated I was a contractor before so I do have some tools that are on the higher end because I, I use and abuse and I build a lot around the house. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna take you through the lumber package and I'll probably leave a description down below, but don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit us up. So first things first, you're gonna need two rubber mats, right? You can get these at Agway, um, Tractor Supply, anything. They're four by six. They're rubber, three quarters of an inch thick, right? Got grippies on the other side there. I am gonna, turn them around so they're this way here so you got a good grip underneath and uh good you can flip them on this side or that side it doesn't really matter uh whichever you prefer and like better but i think uh i don't know we'll kind of check it out when we build it but i i definitely like um that side of the mat better it gives us some more grip uh it's a little less stable but when you're putting down your squat for your squat rack or deadlift uh deadlift rack it doesn't really matter so we'll kind of play it by ear you're gonna need one three quarter inch birch plywood. Good one side, no need for the other side to be good. Uh, save yourself some money, it's about $34. This side here, we're gonna put this side facing up. We're gonna put the GW emblem in the center of it, polyurethane it, and rock and roll with it in the center there. The other two things you're gonna need is two three quarter inch pieces of plywood, right? I use Tongue & Groove Advantech uh, OSB because it's sturdy. Um, I don't have to really worry about moisture in my garage. It's somewhat heated. It stays about 60 degrees all the time and it rocks and uh, rolls pretty easy. It stays relatively flat because of the glue and glues on it. So once everything locks together with the tongue on the other side, you're able to lock it in place and it's sturdy and you don't have an issue. So I'll take you through my tools. You're gonna need a rattle can, one rattle can, one small polyurethane, one little brush this is what i had at home no need to spend a lot of money that's the polyurethane that you'll probably need a probably four or five of these here because they rip very easily when polyurethane your trusty pencil inch and a quarter screws and i'll show you guys as we go through this is to screw everything down together and mark it up a jigsaw skill saw a pilot hole drill and an impact driver right these two items here 
is our key to make sure that nothing splits. Trusty tape measure. Utility knife to cut all the rubber there. You can use a saw, but it becomes a pain in the butt, gums everything up. Um, chalk line, because you need to chalk some lines. And then you need a level. And I usually carry my trusty um, vest here with all my tools. One thing that I put on my vest itself is a rabbiting bit or a bit to allow you to countersink all that um, all them screws. So I'll take you in the garage here where we're going to place this thing and then uh, we'll go from there. So when you take a look at my garage, I still got to do some organizations here, but this is where it's going to be at. Uh, the motorcycle is going to move to the right. The princess carriage for my daughter is going to move to the right. And uh, all this stuff's gonna be moved down to the basement, military equipment, and all that. The squat rack's gonna be about eight foot uh, in general for the, the platform itself. I actually marked two feet away from the cabinets here that I have built for my shop. Reason being is you have about 18 inches on the, on the bar itself. Two feet gives you the extra room. So when you're squatting here, I don't have to worry about hitting my cabinets or anything like that. I'll be able to do Deadlifts down here, overhead arm presses, squats. I'm gonna have a pull-up bar, everything else that goes along. But, but before we get to that, we're actually gonna build the squat rack today and uh, post that video up so you guys can do it. And uh, you know, it's roughly, I think, I'll put it all in the details down below in the links and, and or the description. But I think I have about mm, 360 bucks right now. Rogue is like, six to 12 weeks out right now with any type of equipment. It's getting crazy. Everybody's purchasing stuff. Um, so I just got tired of waiting and I'm gonna build it myself since uh, pretty crafty and pretty handy myself. And my daughter's gonna give me a hand here. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the flip side. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start uh, the process of building the platform, the squat platform. Uh, squat rack platform, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a super uh, technical guy when it comes to names and all that stuff. But the first thing we need to do is I'm going to bring you right over here. Is the one of the pieces of the three quarter inch tongue and groove. You're going to cut this lip right here off, right? This is the tongue and then the groove is on the other side. Reason being you're going to cut that off is because you're going to want that tight against the wall. And if you don't cut this off of there, it won't go tight against the wall and you'll have a lip where it'll collect dirt, right? The other side, when we do that, there isn't gonna be no need to cut that one off because it's actually gonna, the tongue is actually gonna slide in here, right? And then we're gonna bump it in and lock it in place. And that's gonna allow for everything to work out and stay stable and stay connected properly, okay? So I'll show you here, we're gonna start cutting it. So I like to take mine, I like to take my fingers here and kind of run them against this fence here as we kind of run here. And I'm just gonna cut that off. All right, Eliza, so why, uh, why are you painting? Um, you don't like the purple? Purple, I hate purple. Purple, so no purple, so we're gonna do some black. Dad Venture, she's gonna be painting, helping build, and doing all kind of stuff, so go ahead. The key ticket here is to get a good good coat and everything else, and you gotta do that to both sides. Now, if you like purple, hey, rock out with purple, and uh, you won't have to worry about it. But for me, we're gonna go ahead and get that edge painted up, and don't worry about the center because it's gonna be covered up. So, what do you think of this dad venture? What are you, are you gonna use this, uh, Jim, with me, or what? Yeah, probably. Probably not. But I'll be out there by myself. We'll see. All right, so our first piece is dry here. 
I use the leaf blower, my trusty dusty leaf blower, to dry it off in a speedy in place because I don't have patience. So I like to get things done. Got stuff to do. Leaving tomorrow for a week. I'm trying to build this thing here today. So. Gonna be a little tacky, but that's all right. So we'll carry it in. Am I good to swing at? Yep. All right, so as we talked, I already have my marks on the wall. Right? Of course, tacky, right? As you can see, I'm going to stay about two feet away from my cabinets. Okay? I'm going to push this over. Around there, I'll plumb it up. Get my level quick. Oop, forgot my level. I wish I could make things appear like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna rock it down here, bring it across, push, push, bump it over. Two foot, that should be enough. That should rock out pretty good. So, all right, I'm gonna paint the next one and then set that next one in front here and lock it in place and then we'll go from there. All right, so there's a slight mistake as far as what I'm keeping away from the wall. Originally, I told you guys um, that I was gonna keep this whole rack and everything else two feet away from my cabinets, right? So we looked at this doorway, we're looking at you know 21 and 22 inches, somewhere around there. Um, but so what I did is, since I'm building that foldable rack that sits in here, that's able to be folded up, I have a four by eight sheet of plywood, right? Cut it in half, we're talking about 48 inches. I'm looking at 60 inches total for the width of my squat rack from finish to finish. With that said, then I took and divided my platform here to 48, and I put 30 and 30 equals 60 allows me to mark here the overhang on the bar is roughly you know 19 inches somewhere on there gives me a little bit buffer 24 inches is what i gave myself so i'm going to move my platform to this point here which still allows me to open all this stuff up normally because everything will be back set and good to go um, and the actual bar will be sitting up top and we won't have any issues there so that was a mistake i made uh, in, the, in the initial pre-planning stuff, but uh, we're going to go ahead and bump it over. And once we bump it over, we're going to go ahead and take up and bring on the other sheet. So, let's slide that over here. Am I at that mark, honey? Right, right there. Past it or are we good? You went a little past it. Right, so, let's slide it back. I think you're on. Nope, now you're too far. Oh, I see it. The silver was disappearing there. So, there's that. Up against the wall, I'm going to go ahead and mark on both sides here so I have them of where I'm going to be. And this is basically where we're going to have our platform built out. Should be good to go. So we're going to be locking this thing together here. Uh, sometimes it can be finicky, especially with some paint in there. So I got my board here so I don't crush the edge of it. We'll take it down there because we got to come that way a little bit. So, she's still a little tacky. So my daughter's gonna step on the main piece so it doesn't move, and I'm just gonna bring this one closer over to her. So, nice and easy here. I kinda hold it, it taps it in place. We get the two lined up very good. And then what we're gonna do is take this off, run it to the front, because we have a space in the center there. We wanna lock it tight. And we're just going to go ahead and lock this thing into place. As you can see, it's a lot tighter. A couple things that you can do if you can't get it tight enough, have somebody stand on the other side. And then what I do is I take this off. I learned this in the old construction trick where we used to put flooring in, kind of hold it, and then back up, hold it into place. And 
slide it in that way and it actually locks into place. And as you can see, a nice tight groove there, tight as it's going to get. You can kind of pick this thing up if you want a little bit to get, uh, to see if you can get it in tighter, but it's pretty much as tight as it's going to get. Okay. So as you can see, now we're going to start the process of laying our layers on top of that. We'll take you right over there to show you that. All right, so here we have our, uh, our birch, and that's gonna be a horizontal platform. So we had horizontal pieces coming in and out like that that we showed you over there, and then we're gonna put a vertical piece to tie everything together and then use the rubber mats on each side. Now, what uh, lifting weights and doing different things, I don't wanna have a full four foot piece across uh, the front side, especially when I'm starting to do deadlifts, and then we'll show you that once we put this here. So what I like to do is I like to obviously look at my board here, uh, which side is the better side to utilize. There's some scuff marks over there. Again, this is a birch, good one side, it's like 39 bucks. It's gonna get beat up. It's gonna get beat up, boogered up, and all kind of stuff. So make it so that you can pull it up and replace it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just kind of found one. I'm gonna put the, the GW emblem in the center of it because for dad adventures, we'll be doing dad adventures at the gym. But anyways, so what I like to do is basically, it's a four by eight sheet of plywood. I'm gonna go ahead and take four foot of it and mark it in half. Here is my pencil, right? Give me a little tick mark, All right? 48, I'm gonna go down to the other side. That gives me the halfway point of what I'm gonna do here. So 48 again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna physically come in six inches on both sides. And what that allows me to do is when I'm doing deadlift and I hit my weights, the weights will hit on the outside padding, rubber padding, and not on the board itself. And it preserves it a little longer. It's $34, it's not gonna cost very much to replace, but still, why beat up something where you don't have to? So I'm gonna go ahead and move in, six inches on one side. Come down to the end here when I come up. Six inches. Uh, where is my, oh. Take my trusty chalk box here. to cut past because you're gonna have a gross looking um, overcut on both sides I'm pretty good with the saw but if you're not just build yourself a fence on each side with a level or something like that to hold your saw steady so this allows you to basically now come in and take my trusty jigsaw have my daughter hold that other end put my jigsaw inside there and Zip going in both ways. And now you don't have a gross overcut sitting here. Nice and tight. Now your your uh, boards or your, um, your mats will be able to fit nice and tight in there because they're nice and square. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and repeat that on the other side. And then I'll take the board inside and talk you through what we're gonna do next. All right, so we have our cutout board here. It's going to end up being 48, right? You took six inches and six inches from there. I'm going to square it up here on, on the board itself. So I found center of my board, and then I came in two feet on both sides, right? Gives us 48 inches on each side. I'm going to go ahead, and my daughter's probably going to have to help me here because I can't hold both things in chalk aligned. Uh, there's my mark there. So I'm going to hold it there and hold it there, and this is just reference points for me to be able to go ahead and chalk the line, right? So that's a reference point there. Do the same thing on the other side.
reference there, reference here, chalk the line. And that basically tells me exactly where I'm gonna put my board. When we talk about this, this board here slides in. Just like that. Again, you don't have to cut this portion out here, but it's something that I like to do to make sure that it's um, set up, marked on there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my trusty tape measure and I'm probably gonna go every six to eight inches somewhere around there, all the way around with screws. And I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna pilot hole drill it and then we're gonna countersink it and then run our first screws in there. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so I went through and go, went ahead and marked everything out, but I'll explain to you quickly of what's happening here. So in the cross cut here on the side, because we are roughly, I think it was 36 inches across total, I went ahead and did 12 inches on center basically, and then ran two at the end. And then everything else on the field here, we did uh, every eight inches and marked it. I have my trusty tri-square here. I marked it out a half inch. And now I'm able to basically take my pencil and quickly go through here and mark everywhere we, we set a tick mark like that and so forth. We continue that on, my two drills. And then what you do, I wish I had a third drill. This is really to screw it down and I'll show you that later. But you're gonna go ahead and pilot hole drill this here right through. If you had a second drill to be able to drill onto, I take my reamer or my uh, countersink bit, and then I just go ahead and touch it so that when it's all set and done, I'll show you here. When you take your screw, when you set your screw in, I'll bring you here closer. But when you run your screw all the way in, it leaves a nice flush e edge there on, this, on the screw. And that way it doesn't allow it to bar up on it or uh, become a place where you can actually trip and trip hazards and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna continue doing that all the way through. Obviously, I'm gonna back this screw out because that was just to kind of demonstrate. But again, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take an eighth inch bit, right? I'll bring you here super close. Pilot hole drill the whole way through. And then countersink bit. And then bring it right back down here, nice and close. Run that again. My advice to you guys, is to go ahead and run all your or, um, pilot hole drill bits with an eighth inch and then go through there and hit it with the old trusty uh, countersink bit. All right, so we laid the board in here, right? As you can see, OSB runs this way for strength. We're gonna run our birch running the other way and we're gonna take some measurements here. So obviously to make sure, 24, 24, just a little over. So you kind of split the difference there and set anything in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick this over just a skosh. Like that, make sure, run that again. Right on the money. And what I like to do is we have inch and a quarter screws, right? Three quarter inch birch, three quarter inch. It doesn't go into the concrete and raise anything else up. Obviously you can't drive them all the way in, but that's why we have the countersink. I like to take and do my first corner here at the edge. Set that in there. Let it wrap. You can actually set, if you have one, to the lowest level here. I'm gonna set it to my lowest level. It'll actually stop it beforehand. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly go across. Just make sure your walls are kind of square. I'm gonna have my daughter check down there on the line here and make sure that we're tight and not sticking over the edge at the end down there once she push, pushes it down. Are we sticking over? Nope. Pretty good there? Mm-hmm. 
And I'm going to go ahead, it's nice and tight against there. I'm going to run that other screw against my edge. Down here at the end. Run it all the way down. Do I hit? Nice and flush. That's my two edges there against my wall. And then I'm going to go ahead and systematically run down each, each and every hole here, making sure that uh, someone kind of steps along and keeps it nice and flat. So we're going to repeat every hole. I'm going to use my daughter here to come over here and step on top of it. And then we're going to get it nice and flat and sitting. And then uh, we'll talk about what's next. All right, so here we are. We brought the mat in and set the first mat. We kind of like the fact that uh, the nipples are on the top side of this thing. It actually looks pretty good. So I think we're going to keep that as, as part of like being able to grip it and have a little bit of grip on here. The other side, as you can see, is completely flat, right? You need two of them, right? Got 48 inches, 48 inches, plenty of uh, padding to go along there. But here comes the pain in the ass part in general is cutting this. If you use a skill saw or anything like that, it's going to gum up your saw and it's going to trash it. So trust the utility knife. Make sure that you have a fresh new blade and make sure you cut away from yourself. And that's really it. And it's just time consuming. Taking your time of coming in here and scoring it first on the chalk line of the edge of where you're going to go is where your key point is going to be. And you're going to continue that first cut through there and then slowly but surely you're going to get it cut. So, uh, and then you're going to repeat it four times to make sure that you have everything done on each side. And that'll allow you basically to come out here from your squat rack, right? If you need to. And now you have a smaller section in between here to be able to do deadlifts and your bumpers and or weights will be bumped on that. So it actually works pretty good. All right. So, as you can see in the final picture, the gym is just about complete. We have to add a few stickers and some more polyurethane, but as you can see, the left and right side of the platform is complete and the padding is in place. I screwed everything down and everything is set and I started building my home gym. As you can see on future episodes, you'll see how to build a foldable squat rack that folds away and tucks away from everything around you. Stay tuned as we continue our journey into our home gym with a squat platform and a squat rack, all made out of wood. Hopefully you can join us, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.